Hi guys. All right, today is the 24th for Wednesday. And uh, we started off this morning talking about financial literacy. So we went to Google Classroom. We went to our Monday through Friday math financial literacy mini lessons. Open this up. And this we finished today, so it can be um, turned in once you complete it. So this page here is all about loans and interest. So um, we started talking about, well, we talked about interest yesterday. And um, today, the, the interest that we're talking about today is a little bit different because um, yesterday we were talking about how when you put your money in a savings account, the bank will give you a little bit of extra money um, and they, it's called interest um, because they're happy that you're putting their uh, your money with them um, in that savings account. Today we're talking about what happens when you take a loan out and you have to pay back money to the person you borrowed money from and that's called interest. So it says sometimes you need to make a large purchase but you may not have all the money saved to pay for it. Banks will lend people loans for things like a house or car. You pay back the, uh, the loan plus interest. So let's look at this um, picture up here. It says today um, Alex needs to borrow and get a loan for $1,000. So the bank is going to give him, see where the arrow is pointing, the bank is giving him $1,000. Well, he has to pay back the loan. He can't just take money out um, and not pay it back. He has to pay it back. So Alex is going to pay back the $1,000, but the bank is also going to say, well, our fee for you borrowing $1,000 is we're gonna charge you $100 of interest. So you have to pay us back the 1,000, but you also have to pay us interest. So 1,000 and 100, his total that he would pay back would be the 1,100. All right, so we did um, a question um, together. It says, Gerald gets a loan from, um, from a bank for 600. The interest is $4 for every 100 borrowed. How much money will Gerald pay back? So he, let's break this down. So the loan is for 600. And every time um, he borrows $100, he has to pay back $4. Okay, so we could set this up in a... Um, open this up. We can set this up in a chart here, an input output chart. And we could say, okay, every time we borrow um, $100, $100, it's going to cost an interest. So this is the loan amount. And this is the um, interest. I'm just going to put I for interest. So loan, you take out $100, you owe $4. Well, he took out he or she, I forget, they took out 600. So that's 100, 200, 300, 400. All right, so let me make, there's 200, 300, 400, 500, and 600. So all of these hundreds add up to this $600 loan that was taken out. Every time there's $100 taken out, you have to pay $4. Well, if we add up all these four dollars, we can skip count by fours. Four, eight, twelve, sixteen, twenty, twenty-four. So his amount that he owes in interest at the end of all this is twenty-four dollars. And then the amount that he's taking out is that six hundred. So when he goes to pay back the loan, he has to pay back the $600 plus the additional amount of interest. So his total that he's paying back would be 600 plus 24, which would give us that 624. So we put 624 right here because the question says, how much money will Gerald pay back to the bank? Notice 24 is on here, but he's not just paying back $24. He has to pay back the 600 as well. All right, so again, this, um, this should be turned in today. 
So go ahead and um, that is finished so you can submit that. And then if you go here, the rest of the time in math, um, we did a lot of time um, doing our benchmark review. So we have been working in whiteboard and let me find my page, it's not mine. All right, so students have been working all through here. So we started back on page one. All right. All the way back on page one. So um, we have been working on things um, like decimals, making comparisons, expanded form we've been practicing. Um, turning fractions into decimals, decimals into fractions, looking at models, looking at number lines, writing them as a decimal or a fraction, mixed numbers to, uh, or improper to mixed numbers, unit fractions to mixed numbers, um, decomposing fractions, making comparisons with fractions, and here we were adding and subtracting fractions and then here we're adding and subtracting decimals is what we've been practicing this week so in seesaw if you go to your activities you have a math video links for benchmark star review so when you click on this, if one of those topics, because those are some of the main topics that we taught at the beginning of the year, and so it's been a while, and we, we review often, but it's still, it's still been a while. So as we've been reviewing, um, we've been doing pretty well, but if there was anything where you're like, you know what, when she was talking about expanded form, expanded notation, I got a little stuck on that. Well, guess what? There's a video here for you. So you could go through, there's 12 pages and each one has a couple videos on it each. So there are lots of things, all of this here. This has been here since I think spring break. Um, I've been encouraging kids to get on and look at all these. So there is all kinds of stuff on here. Please watch what you think, you don't have to watch all of them, but please watch what you think that you need help on and it's just a video link a youtube video of me teaching that topic and um that might be helpful so tomorrow if you look at the agenda tomorrow we have our math benchmark so we'll start um directions right at eight o'clock and then um officially get started about eight fifteen. so please log into the zoom do not be tardy please try to be on time at 7 45. okay we'll uh, we'll have the Zoom on, ready to go, doing our morning meeting at 7.30. So 7.45, I should have 100% of the class on. All right. After that, you have ST Math and Prodigy. There's practice um, through there that's been updated um, through Prodigy. So make sure you're getting on there and, and doing some fun practice. And then for reading today, we finished our paired passage. So let me get out my notebook. All right. All right, so the first passage we read um, was thunderstorms. Then we read, when does it rain? And then when you have a paired passage, you wanna think about what makes each of these um, passages um, unique. So what stands out, what's different about them, and then also what they have in common. So we went back over and we discussed that today um, and we found we were concentrating on, you know, how those things, uh, what they have that are similar. So they both explain how things are made. So this one is talking about how thunderstorms are created. This one's talking about um, the water cycle and um, how, how we have rain. They're both nonfiction. They're both informing us about things. And then we started working on the questions which are in seesaw 
So if you go to your activities, go down to week 28 reading. So you have passage one here, passage two, you have your questions. So we did, um, we did the one on thunderstorms together and we were, um, I was really just modeling how to go back into the passage and find your evidence. That is our biggest struggle is that we don't go back and find evidence. If we would just do that, we would be so much more successful on reading tests and comprehension overall. Um, we talked about how the goal is not to finish, the goal is to understand what you read. So we have to go back and sometimes reread. So we were going back and doing that and we solved together one through four. And then this second part, when does it rain? We broke off into groups and with a group, we answered the second passage. And then tomorrow or Friday, um, we will do thunderstorms and when does it rain, the, the ones together. So these are the ones that are talking about things that they both have in common, things that they're different, <coughs> similarities between them, what do they both have, um, topics that are in both. So these will do independently and then that will be turned in um, by Friday. So go ahead and draft that once you're done. So make sure you're caught up with the passage one questions and the passage two. And then uh, we'll go over the ones, or I'll, I'll have time given to where you could do the last part independently. All right, then we read our wild about rope, uh, our wild, I keep saying the wrong title, the wild robot, there we go. The wild robot book. And we're rounding up finishing that one. So. If you'd like to get the copy of our next one that we're going to read, it's called Fudge Mania by Judy Bloom. And um, it might have a different, we talked about how there's different covers. So a couple of us have the book, um, but it's with a different cover, which is, it's fine. It's the same, um, same book, Fudge Mania. And so um, you can look on Sora, look on Epic, um, look, check out the library, check Amazon, and try to get your copy so that you can follow along when I read that in class. Then for independent work, we continued our research project. So Monday we picked a woman for Women's um, um, History Month and we found our person in some resources. Tuesday we were supposed to research about the early life. Wednesday we're looking up and researching about their major accomplishments. Um, Thursday, we will see how tomorrow goes as far as how much time we need for our math benchmark. And then Friday, we're going to wrap up and talk about why our person is worth celebrating. So please make sure you're working, whether it's a Google Slides or you've got a, see a seesaw thing going. Um, make sure that you are adding your information in for each day. Um, like if you're doing a slides presentation, you could have one, two, three, four different slides. One could be, um, one could be about you know just showing who your person is. This Tuesday could be slide two. Wednesday could be slide three. Friday could be slide four. Um, however you want to do it's fine. That's just an idea. Um, kind of leaving the creative side up to you guys because you guys come up with some pretty awesome stuff and pretty amazing ways of of explaining and sharing things. So I didn't want to give you know too many specific directions. Um, just kind of some guidance of where to look. So um, if we have time on Friday, we'll try to get to sharing those. If not, we'll push that to next week and have some sharing time because I definitely want to see and learn about your person. In writing, we started off with a homophone um, Kahoot game. We are practicing two, two, and two. Oh, oh goodness. Two, two and two. There we go. Um, so we played a game and practiced that. And then we did a editing practice um, called Learn, Learn from a Pro. And that was in Seesaw. Go to your activities. Go down to writing week 28.
So by now we should have page one completed, page two completed, page three completed. So here we did the first couple together. So um, here Quinn is writing about Beverly Clearly's advice to young author or to young writers. So you're reading his paper and looking for any edits. So this first one, it says, what change, if any, should be made in sentence two? We highlighted sentence two. We said that the book, Henry Huggins, um, since it's a book title, we know that the beginning and the end, both of those uh, words have to be capitalized. So we said that book, book is a common noun. It's not, we're not talking about a specific book like Henry Huggins. We're just saying the word book. So book doesn't need to be since it's not a specific one, but Henry Huggins does need to be capitalized. So these two were very, very similar. There was just one little tiny difference um, here. This was, uh, that last word was lowercase, which is not correct. So we went with B that has both of them um, capitalized. Then in number two, we highlighted sentence four. It says, later Beverly began encouraging child of all ages to write books. We needed to change child to children. We knew that because when we read it, it sounded kind of funny or it sounded very funny. But when we change it to children later, Beverly began encouraging children. That, of course, sounds a lot better. So um, we we tried each of these. We changed ages to age and we read it and we heard it out loud um, how it sounded. And it's, it didn't sound correctly uh, or didn't sound correct. And then books to book, same thing. Um, we agreed that we definitely needed a change, so we went with F, changing child to children. Um, number three says, what change, if any, should be made to sentence five? So you need to go look at sentence five. Number four says for sentence eight, so go look at sentence eight. So we did these two on our own, so go ahead and um, make sure that you have that completed. Then, or actually we did those with a group, and then... Oh, and then we got um, in that same group, once we finished those last two questions, we started brainstorming and, and talking about this prompt. So it says, write about a time in your life you will never forget. So the directions for when they got into a group were to start talking about um, some ideas that are unique. I'm sure we can all quickly come up with something in our life that we'll never forget, hopefully. Um, and whatever, it's usually whatever you think of first, um, you know, maybe it was a, a special birthday party or, um, you know, the day you got your dog or, you know, that's probably an idea that your neighbor also has. So we're really trying to kind of, you know, just really brainstorm and think of something unique, something that's going to make us stand out. And so we were just kind of, you know, kind of jumping some ideas around with our group and um, go ahead and, um, you know, pick, pick a time. Um, and so we did that in group. And then we haven't, we haven't started this yet. We were just coming up with ideas. So make sure you have a unique time in your life that you're never going to forget. And um, if you want to write it to the side here, um, you know, that would be good so you don't forget when we um, continue on. So draft that when you're done. Then we went to lunch and recess. Uh, when we came back, we caught the first part. We didn't do the whole thing because it was over an hour. Um, but from about 12 to 1230, um, we were listening to some women scientists that work in the Arctic um, with polar bears and different animals. And we were hearing about kind of how they got started with their job and their experience. And um, so we did that at the beginning of science. And then at the end, we did our mixtures with our gravel and our sand. And this is in, we're recording in Seesaw. So if you go down to science, week 28, and 29 mixtures and solutions, open this up. All right, so Monday we started off um, with some random toys, just little small random toys, and we created this mixture. A mixture is two or more items brought together, and one of the um, unique things about a, mi a mixture is that they can be easily separated. So we mixed it all up, separated it, and then we did the same thing with trail mix, 
and um, we said that trail mix, um, here it is combined, here it is separated, and we said that it can be identified and separated based on its physical properties. So it was easy to separate it and put it with like things because they share color, they share shape, they share size, all of those physical properties, they remain the same when you have a mixture. You put the marshmallow in, you can separate, uh, separate it back out and it looks just, um, you know, it's the same. It's that same marshmallow. Um, it hasn't changed into a new substance. It's, it's the same. Today we did um, gravel and sand, and mine has some grass in there too. I needed some. Um, I should have brought my um, some tweezers or something to pick out the grass. But <coughs> we said that um, we did a summary of what um, of what happened. So it, um, the gravel and sand were combined to create a mixture. We used a strainer. Um, actually, I used a sieve with um, different holes, so it had. Um, it was stacked and it had different um, different sized holes and so when I put the the gravel and the sand in there together and then I shook it I put the lid on and shook it up um, everything got separated so the rocks stayed up at the top because if you can you can kind of see let me see if you can see here see the little holes um, they were pretty tiny so the holes only allowed the smaller objects to go through and so the sand and some of the grass went through, um, but the rocks stayed up at the top because they were, um, the gravel was a lot larger. So we used a strainer with different sized holes to separate the gravel and sand. Tweezers or our hands could be used to separate the grass if we wanted to continue um, separating. But our goal was just to get the, the sand and the gravel into um, two different piles. So did that. So you can um, click draft on that. You don't need to turn it in yet because we're going to continue adding to it next week when we talk about uh, solutions. And then going down, we did our mini check on density. That is in Google Classroom. You can go down here, mini check density. And when you open this up, All right, so we used the information here and we answered questions one, two, uh, one, two and three. And so um, we noticed that the material that sank in the experiment was the steel um, nail and the spoon. So that material was the steel. We saw clay floated and sank and then plastic was always up here at the top. So we had to use this model that they showed here to um, help us answer. Here we said that shape was the property um, that caused one of these clay boats um, that made this clay boat float versus this clay ball um, sink to the bottom. So it wasn't the material because you can see one floating and one sinking. It was the shape of this ball. I mean, shape of the boat. The ball is very, um, all of that's packed very closely together. So we talked about um, how when all of those particles are packed really close together, um, those are um, items that are usually more dense than the water and um, will cause it to sink. Uh, we said that these are reasons why um, something might float or sink. So the amount of air, the shape, or the material it's made of. And then, um, we said uh, this is about a you have a balloon, and so one is filled with air, one is filled with sand. If the one that's filled with air is floating, we said that the one filled with sand would sink. So you can go ahead and turn that in when you are done with that. Um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday should now be turned in. And you can go back and check um, your grades on Monday and Tuesday. Make sure you're happy with those. And then in the um, going down here, social studies, uh, we did today's article and questions. And then um, Patilla Higgins, you can read about. Um, you can click on this article and read that there. And then different facts about his life, um, you can read here. And then today's article is a continuation of yesterday so if you go here monday through friday social studies oil 
click on your article. Go to Wednesday where it says continue. This means it's the same from yesterday. So the whole top part was yesterday's portion. And then if you want to, you can either re-listen to that or skip down. And the new part for today started right here at Spindle Top Gushes. So your questions are um, that the reader can tell um, that Patillo Higgins never gave up, did not have any friends, was not smart, or wanted to find a new business. And then number eight, how did Anthony Lucas and Patilla Higgins become famous in Texas? Did they discover sources of oil in Texas? Did they invent the first automobile? Did they discover a fast route across Texas? Or did they build the nation's first gas station? And then what is an oil refinery? Start it off and uh, put it in a complete sentence. An oil refinery is, and then go ahead and fill that in. All that comes straight from the link there, so make sure you click on that. Then for intervention, we continued working in whiteboard.chat and continued working on those fraction and decimal um, type questions um, prepping for tomorrow. Music was not as, um, this is not a Zoom week, so make sure your activity for music gets completed and that you're all caught up with your classes for specials. And I will see everybody tomorrow. Um, tomorrow, remember, we have specials at 1215 and then our math benchmark, our second one, and we'll have tutorials um, um, tomorrow on Thursday. All right, I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye.